those of you that are interested in learning more about integrated circuits and all kinds of chips, this is a real good circuit to learn and understand. This is a flip-flop circuit. And notice that when I release the trigger is when the LEDs switch. You'll find the flip-flop circuit in lots and lots of integrated circuits, including the 555. This is the wiring diagram for this circuit, and it did take me a while to build it because it's very balanced and it took me a while to find components that would be closely matched for this circuit to work. But once you get it working, it works very well. Okay, now we've applied power and one of the LEDs has lit. And what I'm going to do is go through this circuit and try to explain how it functions. In this state, I took some voltage measurements. And on the right-hand side, the side where the LED is lit, from ground to base, with the trigger open, I read 1.97 volts. And from the emitter to the base, I read dot seven two volts. Now it takes at least about dot five or dot six volts to forward bias the emitter base junction. So this is why the right diode is lit. Now on the other side. From ground to base, we got 1.26 volts, but the emitter base junction across it, I only read dot zero two volts. So that transistor, for all practical purposes, is out of the picture. Wide open. Now I have closed the trigger and on the right side, the emitter base junction still reads dot seven two volts. So it's still lit. And on the other side, on the left side, the emitter base still reads dot zero two volts. What is going on now is that that 22 microfarad capacitor on the right side is being charged a little bit more because that 100 ohm resistor at the bottom is out of the picture. And this is going to turn out to be very important. Notice the polarity of that 22 microfarad capacitor, how it is being charged, positive on the bottom and negative on the top. Now when I open up the switch, what takes place is we've added in an, that 100 ohm resistor and that produces from that capacitor a negative voltage pulse on the base of that transistor. Okay, here I have hooked up the meter. The meter has been set to read negative voltage. Okay, now I've got the right LED lit. Now when I touch the trigger, nothing much happens, but when I release the trigger is when we get that negative pulse turning off the right LED.
now the right transistor is out of the circuit, wide open. This allows the positive voltage to be applied to the base of the left transistor like this, which turns it on like this. Now we have the left LED lit. And here are the readings of the voltages, just as before, but with the left LED lit. And also, when I close the trigger, here are the readings. Now the left capacitor is being charged a little bit more. And here's the path for its charge. And again, notice the polarity of the charge. And when I open up the trigger, we get our negative pulse from that capacitor to the base of the left transistor, turning it off. Now I'm going to move the meter to the base of the left transistor. And now I'm going to trigger that flip-flop. Whoops, I bounced it. Okay, we'll try that again. Okay, now when I release it, we'll get that negative pulse again. Now with the left transistor turned off, now the right transistor can see that positive voltage goes through the 10K resistor to the base of the right transistor, turning it on. And now we are back where we started. The flip-flop circuit is a very important circuit and you will run into it all the time when you're going through chip diagrams. Thanks for watching.